It is my pleasure this evening to introduce Stephanie A. Cunningham, a curator and educator who focuses on arts and culture throughout the African diaspora. She was recently appointed Curator of Education at the African American Museum in Philadelphia and has joined our faculty here at SBA this year. Stephanie's taught and lectured uh, also at the Brooklyn Museum, the New York Historical Society, City College of New York, New Jersey City University, uh, and elsewhere. As a curator and entrepreneur, Stephanie's worked with the Weeksville Heritage Center in um, Brooklyn, in Crown Heights, um, and the Walcott House in St. Lucia, which is a historic house museum and childhood home of Derek and Roderick Walcott, influential Caribbean poet and playwright. She's an innovative cultural advocacy fellow for the Caribbean Cultural Center African Diaspora Institute based in East Harlem and is also the co-founder and creative director of Museum Hue, an organization that works to increase diversity in patrons, professionals, and cultural producers in the creative economy. She also serves as board trustee at large for New York City Museum Educators Roundtable and Brata Productions, a Caribbean theater company. Stephanie received a BA in art history in, in art and art history from Brooklyn College and, and a master's degree in cultural heritage and preservation studies from Rutgers. We're pleased to welcome her to our talk series and to our faculty here in the MFA for Arts program. Please join me in welcoming Stephanie Cunningham. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, and thank you, SVA, for inviting me to speak today, and thank you all for joining me today in this very cold and rainy weather. All right. So today I'm going to speak to you all about kind of my path and kind of my reflections of what I've been going through um, these last few months in this new era um, and thinking about how I've come to where I am because I continuously gain, uh, have qu people ask me questions about my path and things like that um, after my talks. And so I've included that in this evening's discussion, as well as thinking about Museum Hue and how we will move forward again in this new era. So as a curator of education at the African American Museum in Philadelphia, I direct the educational department in the cre creation of comprehensive educational materials, interpretations, and programs for children and adults. And as uh, Mark stated, I'm also the co-founder and creative director of Museum Hue, an organization that works to increase the visibility of people of color in the arts. We provide a wide range of programs and services to help support and enable arts and culture at the local and international level. We assist with advice on arts careers, as well as produce and present arts-focused events. My work inside and outside museums heavily focus on education, curation, audience engagement, and access, primarily for the black, Latino, Asian, Native, uh, and other communities of color. And so obviously, connecting these disparate parts are challenging, so thankfully, I have a team at the museum, uh, the museum, uh, and also at Museum Hue. So again, people ask me what created this path for me or why I'm here or what brought me to this point. And what I can tell you is that my career spans over a decade in this field, specifically the arts field. So my thoughts have evolved over that time span due to my experience and knowledge gained. I had the opportunity to study art and art history and cultural preservation and intern at reputable cultural institutions like the Brooklyn Museum and the Studio Museum. I have taught in a variety of environments to a vast range of audiences, practicing inquiry-based learning methodologies at the Brooklyn Museum and the New York Historical Society. And so again, the foundation of my work obviously comes from studying art history, studying cultural preservation, and the internships that I've had. And so teaching in these varying styles to audience of diverse uh, ages and backgrounds have informed my skills in program development, arts and education, and strategic alliance building to use the arts as a catalyst for community engagement. I reflect on the roles I serve within communities. I see the museum as an active space for connection and coming together, for conversation and dialogue, 
for listening and sharing. That includes removing silos between departments, especially the education and curatorial departments. I work to propel the vast narratives of the works on view and consciously create programming that speak to the interests and needs of a community. So we see here a photograph of me in my very own community of Flatbush, Brooklyn, where I was born and raised, uh, doing a community project. I was uh, hired to create large pinwheels, and these pinwheels represented uh, the kids in the community. They were able to assist me in creating these pinwheels, having images of themselves and also perhaps the countries that they represent. This is a highly uh, black and immigrant community. So wanting more opportunities to, gauge, to engage communities creatively and include narratives from the immigrant, black, Latino, Asian, and Native communities, I began Museum Hue. One of the first things we did was make our presence felt in cultural institutions like the Met. That's where we had our first Huseum tour, um, led by Sandra Jackson Dumont, chairperson of education at the Met. Our Huseum tours in museums introduce hewers to the space, we see works on view, learn about the multiple aspects of museum work, introduce them to various museum pos positions, and have conversations around what that museum is doing, has done, or should do to increase representation and inclusion. We have monthly guided experiences, and hewers visit the High Line and other cultural institutions uh, throughout New York City, and we have expanded to having museum tours in Philadelphia, New Jersey, New Orleans, and Washington, D.C. And so we would like to have museum tours in museums throughout the country and the world, really. And so we have received uh, testimonials from people that come on our tours like the one that says, I have never visited so many museums before Museum Hue. Or I love Museum Hue because I always come away with inspiring and tangible ideas to engage in my own work and workplace. Or I love that Museum Hue creates a safe space for discussions and the concept of arts advocacy, arts education, funding, and access. And so we've also uh, created Museum Hue thinking about recent studies conducted by the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, and the American Alliance of Museums, which show that man what many of us already know, that museums are not inclusive. Museum staff in New York City, the most diverse metropolis in the world, is over 60% white when two-thirds of the population identify as non-white. The lack of diversity in museum staff extends to its audiences. The National Endowment for the Arts survey found that non-Hispanic whites made up nearly 80% of adult museum visitors. The last survey released shows that non-whites and Hispanic groups visited art museums and galleries at approximately the same rate as in 2008. So not much had changed, and so museums haven't really changed. And so this is a crisis of significant proportions. So Museum Hue is essentially doing the work that museums should already be doing. And so here is another photograph, and this one is during our Huseum tour with Sandra Jackson uh, Dumont, the chairman of education. And so we have these tours, have discussions around what the museum is doing, and also again to just let our presence be felt. And then this is an activity that we did after one of our tours at um, the Museum of the City of New York. And so this gives an example of the kind of stories that we've been implemented with, implementing within museum spaces themselves. So there's other stories like Lynn manuel Miranda. We know who he is. Yeah. <laughs> What's, what um, theater shows did he create? Hamilton in the Heights. Hamilton in the Heights Probably also. Others. <laughs> yeah. Putting your hands back. So telling those stories also, I'm also working on, on Jay-Z, which is a controversial figure, but if we're talking about money and capitalism, he's definitely a part of that. So telling things that people don't know, hands in again. How do you ever sleep, Derek? <laughs> a lot of projects. It's amazing. <laughs> and then bring your head together. And then kind of cover yourself. Because sometimes, again, part of activism, we need to take care of ourselves. Yeah. 
but then sometimes we need to be open to others and others' ideas, which we were today. So open again. <laughs> and I like how people are smiling too, because sometimes our institutions, we're going through so much that we don't smile with each other, but we can do that here. And close again, take care of yourself. You can hug yourself, you can massage the shoulders, <laughs> massage different parts of your body. And lastly, release. <laughs> So again, so these are the projects that I'm working on, again, with Lada and the education department. So building just, um, or bridging just the different disconnects, because the ex exhibitions is on the fourth floor, we're on the bottom floor, but how can we come together as a full team? So thinking for your own questions, how can you come together in your own teams, or your own activism, or whatever you do, if it's not even activism? And how can you share that with other people with different types of stories? Also, what we're doing, again, is just different techniques, from African diaspora, some little bit of modern, just loosening our bodies and putting our bodies out there so then we can have a discussion together and feel a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more safe. That was amazing. So as institutions learn more and more about the work that Museum Hugh has done, we're invited into these spaces. And of course, um, we're also creating our own safe spaces as well. And so thinking about how we can continue to come together within this space, and also the events are great, but thinking about how we can create community and also thinking about opportunities. So our Huseum tours are just one part of Museum Hugh. We also offer what we call university workshops where people can learn uh, resume writing, uh, cover letter critique, so really meeting people at their needs. Um, we also have helped people gain opportunities um, in internships, fellowships, and also other job opportunities in the creative field. Again, not only are we creating a safe space, but we are giving people an opportunity to connect build their network and find their creative community on and offline. And so what started as a whisper is beginning to echo loudly in the halls of cultural spaces. And what began as a noble idea is becoming a matter of public policy. And that's because our diversity is our greatest resource, but we have yet to fully tap into it. And so we must begin to think about different ways to challenge museums and to also hold them accountable. And another workshop that we have, um, one of our university workshops, is working with uh, Robin Symbolis, the former editor-in-chief of Art News and current um, editorial strategist, helping Art World clients develop social media plans. So helping individuals in curating their social media platform and developing an online voice. The internet is a powerful tool, and we are also infiltrating that space on our Tuesday Twitter chats where we reflect on, our, on current events and the lens of arts through the lens of arts and culture. So as we share our personal stories and the stories that we are often missing within museums, museums and the cultural power they have historically possessed often tell a single story. And so Museum Hugh was handing over that power to our communities to tell and share their own stories in museums, but also assisting museums in changing the kind of framework and what they've done historically. And so for example, my consulting at the Guggenheim around this topic, uh, one of the educators shared with me that they felt that the training and the resulting dialogue across the museum um, was the single best session that they had um, in the last eight years that he's been there. So again, talking about these issues within the spaces and also encouraging individuals who don't necessarily work in museums to also think about an opportunity in career um, in museums. And then especially in light of what I like to call, I may have said this already, a new era of America or retro era revived, I have been reflecting a lot and working hard on ways to tell my own story and think about how these stories intersect. So thinking about how I can continue to utilize museum within these spaces, but continue to think about ways that museum who can challenge uh, these museums. 
And so in Chimamanda Ngozi uh, Adichie's TED Talk, she talks about how our, our lives and our culture are composed of many overlapping stories, and all of those stories matter and deserve to have a voice. And so I do that through my work. I use the museum space to create education programs and dialogues that promote and propel our resilience and our resistance in self-preservation. So for example, at the, um, the uh, museum in Philadelphia, we recently had an exhibition called Arresting Patterns. And that exhibition specifically speaks about the incarceration um, of mostly black and Latino young men and thinking about how that affects, of course, their individual lives, thinking about how that affects the community's life and also affects uh, future generations. And so speaking to real issues um, and not just looking at art for art's sake, but moving towards looking at ways that we can really challenge um, our society in general. And so thinking about even like my own artistic practice as uh, you know, someone who's been mostly an arts administrator, thinking about how I can use, um, use my self-expression as a way to visualize kind of the work and what I'm constantly thinking about in these last month or so. And so this, as you see here, is a flag with a spectrum of shades of black and brown and colored hues. And so we're thinking about ways that we can really begin to navigate these spaces, thinking about ways that we can really um, kind of seek spaces that are not only safe, but also seek spaces that really um, highlight and appreciate and recognize the diversity um, that we represent in Museum Hue. And so what's next for myself in Museum Hue is to continue to act, um, activate spaces within and outside museums, creating more safe spaces for immigrant, black, Latino, Asian, native people and our accomplices, and also thinking about how we can continue to speak truth to power. Thank you. What was the origin of the flag and did you produce that? Yes, thank you. So I did produce the flag um, and again I created it within like the past six months or so and my thought was really again not just thinking about the issues that were that I'm kind of feel more even more pressed up against um, the issues of racism and sexism but thinking more and more about ways that I can celebrate the black community celebrate myself and not think about this continue continuation of ways to kind of um, remove myself from the space but kind of reminding myself that I belong and how else can you say that you belong with a flag right so that's kind of the impetus of it so um, so when you go to a museum or a cultural institution and you're kind of maybe there for the first time, do you have a mental checklist of what you wanna see when it comes to like accessibility and? Mm -hmm. Yes, so every time we do a museum tour, we definitely check out what is happening in the space, the exhibitions, um, whether it be the permanent or temporary exhibitions, um, speaking and learning about the staff there and also learning about if that institution is even diverse. Um, and thinking about what the exhibition will be that we'll view, but then also thinking about um, the conversations that we're going to have as well, and also the activity. So the activity that um, was led by Derek Washington um, was inspired by the exhibition at the Museum of the City of New York, which was Activi Activism New York. And so thinking about ways to invoke that into the space. Um, can you talk a little bit about your process in creating Museum Hue, and have you ever encountered any institutional resistance to what you do? Yes, yeah, so 
The process of creating Museum Hue really started with my infatuation and inf uh, frustration with museums. So thinking about someone who my entire life, I grew up not too far from the Brooklyn Museum, knew that that's a space that I wanted to work in, but then also realizing um, the lack of diversity in the space. And so creating Museum Hue kind of came out of, out of that. And I've only recently um, received pushback from one institution where um, one part of the museum kind of wants to work with Museum Hue, and the other part is kind of like not really seeing the need um, for it because of the fact that they think that perhaps they themselves can create, and they and sure, museums can create kind of their own environment for creating diversity, but this museum isn't very diverse and hasn't tried to be more diverse. And so I guess with kind of thinking about Museum Hue, they're thinking that they should kind of um, begin to think about the communities that they haven't yet engaged themselves, yeah. Hello. Um, have you, have you noticed in your time with museums any kind of adjustments they make to their exhibitions because of your presence? Mm -hmm. Yes. So like what kind of changes <laughs> have you seen? Yes, so um, specifically thinking about the Brooklyn Museum again, because um, that's the museum that I have the, mo the greatest relationship with. Um, I was asked to join their team of um, educators to come in and to work on the Ask app. And so the Ask app is, is an app, the only app in a museum where people can come into the museum and ask questions and receive answers in real time. And so I was asked to come on this project um, do you, because of my work through Museum Hue and as a museum educator. And so the comments that we would get from the visitors, um, we definitely, we created the pedagogical approach on how to interact with visitors and kind of um, ask them why they're an asking the questions and uh, so kind of learning more about that visitor. And so we've developed a way to kind of take all of the answers and s bring them to the curators. And then with the curators and with the, with the education team and the ASK team, decided that we would uh, change the exhibition uh, based on the Ask app. And so, for example, if people had more questions about, people had a lot of questions about the racial identity of um, the Egyptians and also the Egyptian collection, how did the museum gain access to it? So we made it more clear in the didactics labels on the wall. Um, visitors talked about um, certain exhibitions have, having too much works on view. So not all of it is, is um, about racism or you know, racial diversity, but, uh, but about people having access to the museum, being able to be a part of um, the changes uh, and reflect the museum itself. So again, someone was talking about the space. And so we um, changed it in a way where it was more um, or less works on view so people can have more space because that's what they wanted in this particular area. I'm curious if you have some sense of how the new administration is going to affect broadly across the arts and, and to some degree maybe what you're doing. <laughs> Do you have any sense yet? <laughs> so that is a part of, um, I guess my fear right now is thinking about losing um, funds for the arts and we've already seen that the administration is uh, putting things in place that is opposite from the last administration and so it's already seeming uh, like there will be less funds um, for the arts. The arts is all already um, needs more funding, but it's believed that there will be more cuts. And so that is the fear. And so again, we're thinking about as museums gain cuts that may also limit our access to them. So activating not just museums, um, but spaces outside of museums as well.
Hi, Stephanie. Um, to tag on to the uh, issues of, of funding in the arts, is uh, uh, Museum Hue doing anything to also address um, opening museum spaces and even art and cultural spaces to uh, a wider range of economic class? A wider range of? Economic class. Economic class, yes. So we're definitely thinking about different economic classes within these communities specifically. Again, black, Latino, Asian, um, native communities of color. But then also thinking about um, how Museum Hue, if we need to also become a space ourselves, because right now we work out of different spaces, different museums, um, or different cultural organizations, but how can we also begin to create our own space? So not just being a 501c3 organization, but a literal uh, building um, to host ourselves. Um, and so of course thinking about what that would be for us financially is, is where we are right now to assist in creating more opportunities for those um, in different socioeconomic backgrounds. Steph, if there's like one piece of advice you could give to people who are leaving an MFA program, artists, about how they interact with museums, mm -hmm. what would it be? Yeah, so for me, I think it would definitely be with thinking about, of course, what part of the museum, what department you would want to work, but thinking about how you can utilize your work in the space. So even if you are curating, having a work in a museum, being curated, thinking about how you can be a part of that, because I feel like a lot of times within museums, its works are curated, but the artist has little kind of, um, say in the way that works and as you know as an artist and so we feel that it's important that artists really begin to gain a voice for themselves within the museum space and we see that there's a lot of different um, organizations um, and groups and projects that are being created in kind of assisting artists in this sense as well there's an organization called recess um, which recently opened that um, kind of encourages artists to not just, you know, seek museum spaces, but also independent curation and also thinking about working with uh, people who are mostly independent right now as well. Thank you. Hi, Stephanie. Um, I took your class last semester, the social media class, which I thought was really interesting um, about how you're using um, resources at your fingertips right now um, and not having an existing space um, mm -hmm. within this, this um, museum integration that you're doing. Um, can you just speak on that a little further for people that aren't aware of how you've, you've made amazing strides um, towards the efforts that you're making and how you've done that using social media, using not having uh, those established, you know, buildings and grounds, um, that idea, that foundation idea that we think we need in order to be productive. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, so Museum Hue really started um, as kind of an online resource for individuals where we just were having conversations about arts and culture in these different communities and ways that we can kind of come together and bridge um, opportunities for each other. And so as the popularity of Museum Hue uh, grew, we began getting more and more followers online. And so speaking with our online followers about ways that um, they would like to interact with us in real time as well. So taking that kind of online network that we had created and coming together to create an opportunity for us to meet, hence the Museum tours, um, and also ways that we can help each other, hence the university workshops, and also ways that we can continue to um, help others and gain opportunities. And so really having that dialogue um, amongst one another about what we want to see, of course our frustration with museums, but mostly about building our own kind of um, community outside of, uh, outside of the museum.